Thank you, Hassan. Thank you, Mateo. Thank you, Ersin. Thank you very much. Thank you, all the guests. Thank you very much and looking forward to get all these billions and trillions from all the financial institutions. Thank you. Applause. And thank you very much, Dennis, for the great moderation. And we'll be calling you back on stage, so maybe. Ah, okay. Well, just wanted to let you know. Thank you very much, our dear speakers. Thank you. So we'll be, we're a bit behind schedule. That's why uh, we're going to be, thank you. Thank you. That's why we're going to start immediately with the next panel. Um, this is going to be about the status quo and how to move forward. For our moderation, I'm going to call Alfred Paus, the president of Austrian Ukrainian Business Council and board member of the International Council of Business Associations and Chambers in Ukraine. Welcome, Mr. Alfred Paus. So I will leave you the stage, but just I just want to shortly introduce our speakers, call them to stage. For the International Chamber of Commerce, Head of Global Engagement, Damian Burkhardt. For the Ukrainian Chamber of Commerce and Industry President, Gennady Chiziko, please. For the US Ukraine Business Council, Denis Yatchin, he's already on stage, Director of Corporate Relations. For the Canada Ukraine Chamber of Commerce, Managing Director, Emma Toros. For the International Turkish Ukrainian Business Association, Chairman of the Board, Mr. Burak Pelivan. For the Association of Industrial Automation of Ukraine and Head of Ukrainian Cluster Alliance, Alexander Yushak, CEO. For the European Business Association, Executive Director, Anne Derevyanko will be online. She is, we're hoping that she will be connected. And for the Ukrainian Automotive and Mobility Cluster, and President of the Ukrainian Association of Management Consultants, Olga Trofimova, Cluster Manager. So we have two, four, five. One more. One more. Six panelists. One is missing. Plus Anna being online uh, representing the European Business Association in Ukraine. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm happy to moderate this panel. This panel is a more general panel. Uh, because it is not going uh, into details concerning any specific issue, but it is the essential question. Where are we standing now, and how can we move forward? We are here at a business forum, rather than a more political forum like uh, the Lugano conference was. So this is the forum with the people uh, who should get things going and not so much what to do concerning the framework, how to do the framework, how to uh, manage that. Uh, this is the more political issue. Uh, I may ask uh, Gennady Chizhikov, uh, since he is uh, president of the Ukrainian Chamber of Commerce of, uh, and, and Industry, uh, what do you see and how do you judge the actual state of the economy in Ukraine? Because if you want to say how to move on, you have to start to say where are we? Gennady, please. Thank you very much, Alfred. Uh, you asked me a uh, so important question, and I needed to ask how, my, uh, how much time I have. <laughs> Three minutes. <laughs> okay, very good, very good. That's why I will be very uh, busy. Uh, situation what was in the beginning of the match and now different. Uh, from, from my point of view, the, I can say that Ukrainian business now more and more adopted to, to the situation they were born. Of course, it's not easy. It is not easy because, uh, honestly speaking, this is situation uh, of stress, situation of un uh, uniqueness, 
because it's to, uh, to work in the situation when the logistic uh, chains blocked or uh, destroyed, when the city bombed, uh, when the, a lot of people, uh, as you know, them, uh, more than six million people uh, now uh, across the board of Ukraine and now get the second possibility to be, how to, to live, to, uh, to work in the uh, countries of Europe. And uh, also the a lot of a lot of questions, a lot of uh, challenges. Of course, we know about uh, some uh, general figures. More more than early, nearby 30 percent of Ukrainian business stop their activity. Uh, nearby the um, 50 percent have uh, a lot of difficulties with their uh, work. If this is general figures. What can uh, cons uh, for demonstrated? It's not simple situation, but me, like a president of Chamber of Commerce, for all this, we are very important to see some trends. What is it? And main trends, what uh, business after this shock start now more and more thinking about how to be, not on real life, how to develop their activities. Uh, thinking about the relocation to find some more uh, safety place, to find new pro, uh, pro, uh, pro, um, uh, partners. Many businesses are now, now thinking how to be, to work um, in uh, with Europe more uh, easy way and Europe, if you know the European Union uh, made uh, very good steps forward to Ukraine that uh, we uh, cancelled the a lot of tariffs for uh, export products etc etc. It's demonstrated what business now in the main trend business in the way to find new solution in this very difficult situation. And for us, for Ukrainian business, very important to uh, what we see is the openness, in many cases, openness of the European partners, Turkish partners, and a lot of partners abroad who are ready to work in this very difficult situation. This, uh, from my point of view, this is motivated what the end uh, give me the a little bit uh, more positive what Ukrainian business can find in new possible to work in this very dramatic period of our history. We named in Chamber of Commerce, this is like economical front. And this front for business not less, um, uh, for Ukraine is not less important than the real front with our enemy. That's why uh, we uh, here in this conference just to share information What's not needed to wait when the war is finishing. Uh, business ready to work and would like to work in any circumstances, and especially now in the period of war. It's dangerous sometimes, but business always the risk. Of course, we have a, a lot of questions to the uh, international organization, first of all, multinational organization, how to find, how to support international partners, our investor, by uh, insurance, by uh, another question, but this is a little bit for another topics. That's my, very shortly, it's situation not easy, sometimes very difficult, but the main trend, Ukrainian business adopted more and more the situation and would like to work not only in local market, but internationally as well. Thank you very much. Uh, so the point is we are in a basically unpredictable situation because we don't know how long will this war last and uh, what will be the status at the end of the war. This is maybe, uh, what is victory? What does it mean? This is the big question for everyone, I think, here. But coming to the point, and Gennady was uh, very clear on that, we should start planning for the future now. Because as soon as the point, the time comes when we can act, we should be ready to act and not start the whole thing from scratch in maybe half a year or one year or in three months, however the, uh, the actual situation will last. Secondly, uh, there are some uh, obstacles, I would say, uh, to uh, the inflow of foreign direct investment and uh, uh, financing uh, the financial needs of Ukraine, and I may fall back on the question of my friend and colleague Dennis in the previous uh, panel. Uh, what about uh, the uh, uh, blocked, the frozen, the freezed money 
This is, if I'm not wrong, $300 million from the Central Bank of Russia, plus an additional $30 million uh, from uh, Russian oligarchs, etc. I may give an answer as a non-expert. We are living in a Western legal system. So it is not Russia where we are. That means we have to abide by the existing laws. And it will not be that easy to use these $330 million because the legal issues are very difficult and we will have to see whether there is even a possibility. So don't take it as fixed. Uh, newspapers are writing that, etc. This is not a fixed issue. This is open and questionable. Uh, so, let me continue in asking uh, uh, our panelists. Uh, we are uh, chambers. We are um, business associations. We are clusters here. And a major part uh, of uh, uh, this panel is constituted by my colleagues in the International Council of Business Associations and Chambers. I may start with uh, my colleagues, and since we are in Turkey, I may start with uh, uh, Burak. Uh, what do you think? What can be the role? What can the international bilateral organizations we are representing here, clusters, etc., do uh, in this situation to support Ukraine? Thank you very much, Alfred. We had today a historic, I can say, keynote speech by the leader of the world business community, Mr. John Denton. And I think his speech could show us a good roadmap what can be done, how can we facilitate, how can we strengthen Ukrainian economy under these harsh conditions. All these business associations, all these business chambers, in the good time and in the bad time, have an important responsibility to give right platform for the businesses. To name as business doesn't mean automatically to make turnover and profit. To be a businessman doesn't mean you make profit and you can just pay salaries, pay the, your suppliers and to make business. After the war, according to different estimations, but averagely, Ukraine economy will decrease 45 percent this year. The unemployment rate will reach 50 percent. Ukraine temporarily has lost because of the slump of demands, because of the logistics problems, because of the blockade of black seaports, because of the war conditions, almost 50 percent of its industrial capacity. Temporary, we hope. So there are big challenges in front of Ukrainian businesses and big challenge in front of all these business associations and chambers. What can be done? First of all, we should underline everywhere in every platform the economic front is as important as well the other fronts. Every people has a individual war. Every people needs to bring its home, their home, bread for their families. So every people should work or at least have some incomes. And because of that, as we always say, world stands with Ukraine, world supports Ukraine. But that kind of phrases should be not just words and supported with deeds. Of course, the international business community and committee engagement, commitment 
to Ukraine. Till now, not bad. More than 12 billion US dollars already injected Ukrainian economy. There are big commitments, and altogether this commitment is more than 100 billion US dollars. Maybe over the recent decades, no country had such a big support. But that support should be realized as soon as possible. Every day counts. Ukraine does not need time, years. International business community, international community should support Ukraine now. As the budget needs, we know that Ukrainian budget, only budgets, needs every month at least 5 billion US dollars. But the, if you look over the same five years, Ukraine can get 2.5 billion US dollars. So every month, already 2.5 billion uh, deficits. So this period even, starting today, let's say, starting 1st August, needs will be even more than 5 billion US dollars. So as business associations, as much as we can, we should increase the awareness of that issue. So international community should support Ukraine now and with mostly not debts and grants. Because Ukraine, after the war, post-war period, shouldn't fall in a debt trap as well. So the amount of that international aid should be increased. It should be more grant instead of debt. And that commitment should be realized as soon as possible. We always say about reconstruction and rebuilding of Ukraine after the war. I should say, even before the war uh, finish, that kind of the efforts should start. First of all, with projections, because in some big infrastructure projects, even project time takes one, two years, even more. And second, to give people help to make a movement, a move inside of the European economy, so that rebuilding and reconstruction efforts should start in the relatively safer areas now in Ukraine. And not the lost capacity and for updating the current capacity. So as a summary, I can say that we really praise, we really should say thank you that strong commitment of international business committee and international community to Ukraine. But that commitment should be realized with bigger amounts, should be realized sooner, earlier, and it must, it must be more grant than that. Thank you. Thank you very much. May I continue with this question? And uh, may I ask uh, uh, the next uh, speaker uh, to also tell, uh, beyond financial help, uh, what could be done by the bilateral organizations? And I may ask uh, my colleague and friend, Emma, what can Canada, Canadian Ukrainian Chamber do? Yeah, thank you, uh, Alfred, for your question. First of all, our uh, chamber is uh, very well connected with the Ukrainian diaspora. Actually, we are part of the Ukrainian diaspora. And uh, all uh, support and help is so multidimensional. First, at, at the individual level. A uh, few um, diaspora members uh, and uh, also members of uh, Canada-Ukraine business community are in Kyiv, like myself. So, and uh, uh, you know, uh, as Burak mentioned, uh, just let's go down at the human level. First, safety. Yeah. So we are trying to provide uh, shelter to uh, those people, to those our colleagues, members uh, who are connected with us uh, and uh, who are just, let's say, in Bucha or maybe in Eastern Ukraine. So we say we call our members and say, if you need to stay in Kiev, welcome, welcome to my home. 
and just we have people, just we provide our apartments for those people, so food, maybe some money, because sometimes people escape without any belongings. Uh, secondly, let's say about uh, just business, so people have to, to take care about themselves. First, um, evacuation of uh, just maybe vulnerable uh, people, uh, just like children, like uh, elder senior people who can't uh, help themselves. So we do help uh, this, and diaspora is doing a lot. They are collecting the money, and people who are more brave, uh, so they provide for cars and uh, whatever to evacuate people. Also support uh, the staff uh, of the companies. Yeah, and we say uh, our members and we say our Canadian colleagues who have offices here, just try to pay people at least a little bit and uh, fairly. Uh, not like, uh, you know, top management is paid much more than other stuff. Let's pay uh, fairly this time to let people survive and to... Um, to continue uh, the business and to restart the business um, just when time comes. So I, I think that uh, Canada is doing a lot, but Canada is a very conservative country and we are reporting after things are done, not before, as our government likes. So uh, that's why uh, just uh, I think that in a few months, uh, maybe in three months, if there is interest, we will make a common event and uh, tell uh, and report everything our chamber and diaspora and uh, uh, Canada done uh, within this really very, very disturbing and uh, just unprecedented time. So I, I think I have answered your question, but uh, of course you are welcome to follow uh, what Canada is uh, telling about or is not telling about. If you, if you have uh, doubts uh, that Canada is not the greatest uh, supporter of Ukraine, so please ask us and we will tell you. But of course, uh, this international community is to help now, as Burak mentioned, that's definitely to be done. And uh, just the role of international community and diaspora to uh, just to rebuild what was done before, before uh, 20, the 24th of February. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, we are a business forum yesterday, today. We have heard about grants, loans, we have heard about charity, helping the population. May I ask Olha uh, to focus on what can be done in terms of business, since we are in a business forum. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, I also give some small story and small example of uh, how we do it. On 20th of February, we just finalized a project of uh, certification of management consultants and also supporting to start up businesses in Azov region, about 400 new businesses. It was really great project, really. We made a lot of efforts for that. But from 24th, as we know, uh, most of our consultants and our beneficiaries are right now under occupation or in the war. From the March, we have announced and we had a call for mobilization of management consultants of Ukraine and we start to support businesses. We didn't have money, we did it on a volunteer base, but we understood that our companies, our SME, uh, small and medium businesses really need professional support. Professional support to relocate their businesses, professional support for marketing, for export from, uh, policy strategy, you know, so, uh, for operational management, for fundraising and other things. And we did it. And for last two months, we do have a project with GIZ and Expert Promotion Office and DIA Business. GIZ, uh, German, German Ministry of Economy. Merci. And uh, 
right now we do have already we are supporting already 170 enterprises and we we are looking forward for more companies for more SME and support them with professional services how to enter other markets how to survive because just to open grants just to give money to companies it's really great just to open borders thank you just to decrease some rules or regulations perfect but some companies simply do not have resources or do not have competences to do it and that's why they really need support from from our side from professional service side and this is exactly what we do i just give you some small examples for the company so we are how to say we are not waiting for uh, for the end of the world. I mean, we think about it, that it should, it must end every minute. But we start to support businesses from March. And this is exactly what is needed. I will just give you some examples of the company from Bucha, Vesna. She's very fa they're very famous with cosmetics. And right now we support them with relocation and with new market entrance. Company Kasane, furniture company who produce furniture with also Ukrainian symbolics and they stop their production only for some days and then they proceed their production because people should work. Economy front is very important, you are absolutely right. And people should not hide every day in the underground, they should work. This is also part of freedom. And also company Liquor Invest who produce uh, prothesis for uh, metallic ceramics, for bones, uh, artificial bones and other stuff. It's a very, very famous company and they also need support. And many other companies, Agrasem, this is a company which I'm really proud of. They support our agribusiness. They found new instruments, new tools, how to do it, how to support them. You know, and they also need professional services support. And also company Green uh, Technologies, which uh, Greenland, which uh, moved from Mariupol, which did actually garbage recycling, very interesting, very challenging business. They did it in Mariupol, then they moved to Zaporizhia, and now they are moving and relocate their business to Novovolinsk. So we are proud of these companies but we need to support them. So this is our role in it and we do it and this is, we, we are not waiting. We should start right now. We have started and we will proceed with this. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for this, Olha. This is really business related support. And uh, before I will ask Anna Terevianko, who is heading the European Business Association in Ukraine, and who is one of the really important players in this respect in Ukraine. I may just make a mention. When I was maybe two months ago with Gennady Chizikov at the Federation of Austrian Industries, there was a big discussion and uh, there was uh, the will to provide support to Ukraine. But there was one question from uh, the General Secretary, Mr. Neumeyer, Yes, we would like to help, and we, we mean it, we are serious about it. When do you think, however, when will there be a ceasefire? So that means this is the obstacle for direct help, for direct uh, um, uh, foreign investment. Maybe uh, if Anna is with us, I may ask her, how do you see that as top representative of the European Business Association? Many thanks. Hello, everyone. Do you hear me well? Yes. Excellent. Uh, so, look, I, I would like really to concentrate on how the business community feels and the, what can we do in order to um, improve resilience of the Ukrainian economy. And in this respect, I would like to start from saying that, you know, the first shock for the business community has passed. Because the first weeks, the first months 
uh, already um, troublesome, I would say, very tough. But nowadays, we see that the businesses try to concentrate on, on operating and they are um, partially or fully operational. I will give you a few figures so that you uh, can understand how the businesses look like at the moment. As for the moment, when it comes to small businesses, 21% are fully operational and 38% function with certain limitations. 17% uh, of the business community in small and micro businesses do not work at all. So you see the situation in small and micro businesses is really very negative. When it comes to salaries uh, in small and micro businesses, only 23% of companies pay salary in full. 32% of them reduced salaries. 21 do not pay at all, and 12% have cut staff even. We also asked companies uh, from small and micro businesses about reserves, and what kind of capacity they have in order to sustain the situation in case the war is going to continue. And 12% of them said that they have reserved only for one month, 34 for several months, 12% for six months, 5% for more than one year, and 29% of respondents have no reserves at all. The situation looks much better when it comes to big businesses, because small and micro, it's presumably they are feeling worse because of no support from global headquarters. When it comes to the big businesses, the situation is much more rosy, because 47% uh, of, of big businesses fully operate and 50% operate with certain limitations. So you see a vast majority of big business community uh, feels okay, and only 3% are not working. When it comes to sustaining people and human resources, 63% of our respondents in big businesses pay salaries in full, and 25% pay even additionally to those ones who are relocated outside Ukraine or in the western side of Ukraine. Only 13% have managed to reduce salaries, and 4% actually have sent their employees to unpaid vacations. So you see the situation in big business community is much better. When it comes to um, reserves, uh, in big business community, 34% um, have reserves for six months, 20% for one year, and 19% for more than a nine year of reserve. So we see that the business community stay committed which is also a very good sign uh, from the, from the um, political point of view. So, the second part of my speech, what can we do in order to help businesses to sustain and become more resilient and more agile? And so, when it comes to this, I would say the first and foremost issue which needs to be settled is that we need to stop war. Make everything possible so that Ukraine and Ukrainians win in this barbarian war, because uh, in case it will be done, all people will come, oh, not all, but majority of people, majority of Ukrainians will come back, and actually foreign countries will not have to, you know, support very much the refugees in general, mm -hmm. and they will not have to actually send macroeconomic support mm -hmm. in those volumes, at least uh, as, as they do now, because actually investments will start to come to the business, uh, to the environment. Uh, so that's why the first thing is actually it's necessary to stop war. Whatever we can do, we should do. Because otherwise the world will be really suffering a lot. And the second is tax residence status for displaced people. We raised this issue on political levels many times and this issue needs to be settled because uh, we are approaching already first uh, half a year for certain people who left Ukrainian uh, territory and they are settled in certain countries. And in case this issue will not be politically resolved, obviously those people will have to be re-registered re as fiscal residents of those countries where they are located, which would mean, which could mean, actually paying additional taxes uh, to those um, countries where they are, which is not a good scenario for Ukrainian refugees and Ukraine as in general. Third thing uh, uh, to actually help is to ease experts to the EU and to the globe. And many things have already been done from the European Union, for example. We have zero tariffs uh, with EU. We have actually also lots, lots of B2B platforms 
uh, have been developed uh, so that uh, to allow business matching. And we have to do a lot of other things, like a visa-free regime for goods, I mean, like ARCA introduction, logistics uh, expansion, and settling. So lots of stuff which could really is export potential of the country. And obviously, we can actually have some access to funding because money is really essential thing for Ukrainian, Ukrainians. And we see actually here where we could find room for you know, cooperation with you guys because it's obviously necessary to um, provide some support to Ukraine uh, economy. Uh, and that's why, especially the small and micro business, because we've seen those figures which I mentioned. And this thing, which is also important, it's necessary to invest in Ukraine. Obviously, it is essential thing, but in order to make it done, we need to settle the issue of political risk insurance and uh, in general international insurance of assets and properties. So here is again political um, uh, moment needs to be used, and the political um, environment needs to help. Uh, because without this kind of mechanism, it will be very difficult to expect that the private investors would come to Ukrainian territory while the war is going. Anna, uh, may, I, may I ask you? So you this kind of stuff needs to be settled and conclude. I would like to say that, obviously, again, we need to understand that the war needs to be over. This is, this is the thing which, which will help Ukraine, Ukrainian business, Ukrainian economy, and will help you. Because without winning the war, it will be next to impossible to expect that the world is going to, the world is going to be stable and prosperous. Thank you very much. Uh, as you have completely rightly stated, uh, also insurance is a very important provider, proviso. First, the political risk insurance, and second, uh, the insurance of property and uh, commercial business, so to say. Because also that, the big groups, market leaders, like Unica, they have gone down with insurance in this respect in a situation when it is double important. Okay. Uh, may I thank you very much. Please stay with us. May I, this is European Business Association. May I ask Dennis from the US Ukrainian Business Council, what is uh, the point of view, the ideas, the proposals from the American side, uh, having uh, in mind that America is helping Ukraine most of all? Thank you, Alfred. Uh, so, uh, I would like to highlight that each crisis brings opportunities. As my fellow uh, friend Shevkia Jr. is saying, that God, God helps to those who help themselves. Yeah, correct. So, uh, in regards to the U.S., so as you might know, the United States has provided to Ukraine more than more than all, almost 40 billion dollars financial support. Part of that, of course, going to the military, part of that going to financial support, to uh, macroeconomic support and other things as well. But part of that is going to financial support as well. And this is approximately nine billion dollars. So yes, businesses is looking for opportunities that arise since the war started. I would like to concur my friends, uh, Hinadi Chizhiko, Burak Pehlivan, just and, and remember it, five, five months ago, six months ago, nobody even thought about that Ukraine will get a, a, a membership status at the European Union. Today we have it. Nobody thought that Ukraine will get access to the European uh, budgets. Today we have it. So these are the opportunities and a lot of businesses, including the United States businesses, they are looking forward to these opportunities and they are looking forward to work with the Ukrainian government and Ukrainian counterparts in order to seize these opportunities and to go and overcome these opportunities. Additionally to that, I would like to say a few words about the United States businesses. I would like to say from my yesterday chat chat that I had here on the arena with Trimble, they are having a great, a great, a great perspective for Ukraine. So two years ago, they have been, they had, they, they were working with Ukraine on some projects, but today this is completely other agenda that we have. I would like to mention about other companies from Turkey, from 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 from, you know, from European Union, from from United States as well. All of them are looking today for the infrastructure for a building. So. To be honest, the, the key issue what we are having today is, of course, the, finan is the financial support. 
to be honest, I was, uh, I expected more positive, um, uh, if I may say so, feedback from previous panelists, from Hassan, from Matteo, and from Ersin regarding the financial support to Ukraine. But okay, <laughs> we have what we have. So yeah, but in any case, as I mentioned, the crisis brings opportunities and we need just to use these opportunities because as somebody mentioned from, from the politicians, the opportunities like this, they arise once in a hundred years. Of course, the price that we paid since uh, February 24, 23rd is tremendous. But all what we need to do is just not to lose this opportunity, we need to seize this opportunity and we need to go over this opportunity. And all just to highlight and to underline the Ukrainian government and the uh, and the business, the European business, the Turkish business, the U.S. businesses, they need to become an allies, an allies in uh, development, in allies in reconstruction, in allies in finding ways to work with each other, because. Sometimes we had in the past opportunities when they uh, were very, very much reluctant to work with each other. But okay, let's hope that uh, this, uh, this times were in the past. So just, just to highlight, so today we have only two, two, two ways. We can go in fame or we can down in frame, if I may say so. Thank you. Thank you very much. Very clear statements. We have one last panelist, Alexander. What are your views? You have three minutes, please. Yeah, uh, I think we discussed the subject, how to be uh, resilient, how to be the, to more resilient. And uh, the answer of uh, your Ukrainian cluster alliance, I represent, it's uh, enough simple, so we should uh, better collaborate at the level of professional community. Uh, for us, it means uh, to be more united, more mobilized, and more um, concentrated on common value, but also common challenges. Regarding common challenges uh, at the level of clusters, which unite more, um, today we unite more than 35 uh, clusters in Ukraine, different industries, uh, more than uh, 2,000 enterprises. Uh, so the, the challenge number one is about uh, order taking. It's not uh, uh, it's obvious because, uh, as we said, uh, half of SMEs uh, today is stopped, uh, stopped operation. So uh, it's really where to find a new order. So, and our answer is uh, option is very simple. We should go international. It's not new, uh, but we see a really big, big room uh, for a new opportunities. The world was never so open for Ukraine like today. And in fact, we de deploy today three main uh, strategy. The first one is about joining to international association community. Uh, this year, uh, just in, in uh, previous three months, we joined it to uh, European Cluster Alliance, which unites more than, uh, sorry, uh, 17 uh, national cluster associations. We united to uh, European Institute of Innovation Technologies. Uh, our association, uh, that's automation, we joined it to Control System Integrated Association of US. Uh, we also joined it in a similar association, Pan-European Association in textile industry, in automotive industry, in industry. Um, it means that uh, all these uh, associations, they open door for, for our clusters, our uh, association for free, even if, of course, it's cost money. And uh, it's uh, really profitable and very, uh, very interesting for us just because uh, it's an uh, open door for new resources, for uh, the competence, expertise, and so on. And uh, the, the next uh, strategy, we try to go to um, dialogue, and we develop dialogue around uh, not just uh, export import operation, but a uh, little bit behind, beyond. Uh, we, we, we discuss uh, about, uh, for example, integration to value chain, how we can be better integrated to value chain. And for example, in, uh, for Ukrainian company, in my association, uh, we developed a database of uh, free resources in uh, control system integration, in IT developers, industrial market, and we uh, proposed it to our um, partner in the US and uh, Europe. And he, uh, we, we had immediate, um, immediate feedback that yes, so we need such kind of services just because in many countries uh, there is a lack of uh, yeah, resources, uh, the talents and engineers. And, uh, and other options uh, can be done with uh, yeah, better integration into um, European program uh, supported by uh, a European Commission like uh, Horizon Europe, like Hori Digital Europe and so on. There are many, many uh, windows of opportunity today for Ukrainian companies and 
different categories. And the third one, the strategy we developed, we deploy, is about uh, building bilateral agenda with different countries. For example, Czech Republic, we started to build uh, agenda around manufacturing and advanced manufacturing. And uh, we, we started just because how to increase participation of Ukrainian SMEs in trade fair in Brno this year. But then we start to think, uh, well, we found uh, many other touch points, uh, for example, in cybersecurity, in, uh, in domain how to develop digital innovation hub, you know, that is these main tools for how to increase innovation and digitalization of uh, industrial SMEs. Uh, also, we started to, to exchange uh, um, around industry 4.0 and so on. So this is just an example which can be multiplied by, by other countries. I think we, we, we can propose a similar agenda for uh, Turkey, just because we are very interested in, for example, uh, Turkish uh, industrial program to be tak. Uh, we don't have in Ukraine such a solid industrial program. So uh, the question, you can we replicate, uh, replicate it? Yeah, and, and maybe we, we can go to, to other uh, similar topic in sector of agriculture, of construction, uh, and, and, and so on, so on. And I think we started this discussion with Burak. So uh, thanks a lot. Uh, well, finalizing, I, I would say that we are very open for discussion, any kind of for uh, collaboration with, with any countries. And uh, I'd, I'd like also to thank uh, to uh, organizer of this forum uh, to uh, all partners but uh, attendees yeah, because this is really uh, crucial for, for Ukraine to have such kind of support. Thanks. Thank you very much. So if we take us including Anna we are really representing the business in Ukraine internationally and domestically. And uh, that means this is very competent, a very competent uh, panel. Uh, one further question. Uh, as a businessman, I'm used uh, to uh, resort to a SWOT analysis, strength, weaknesses, chances, and risks. Microphone is working again. Uh, chances and threats. Uh, question to you, two minutes maximum per person. Uh, we have heard about infrastructure, of course, this is extremely important. But talking about industrial sectors, uh, everybody, uh, every business leader knows that you should not work so much to extinguish your weaknesses, but that you, sh you should focus to building on your strengths. So what are, in your view, uh, the sectors which should be most supported, apart from infrastructure, because this has been demolished and, and, and destroyed so much, so this is clear. M may I start with Gennady? Uh, thank you. Uh, when we, uh, we ask about the future, and the future of the Ukraine, economical future, uh, more or less my contacts with the officials, uh, with experts, with my colleagues, demonstrated what we will, a couple of years after the war, we will see absolutely different face of Ukraine international and the local. From my point of view, uh, Ukraine will be in the, uh, it should be in the, uh, this is we see also in the, our program what was pre uh, represented in Lugana. Uh, I think we have four or five more important directions where we will see uh, our strengths. First of all, we have a very good results previous years of the green, uh, green economy and we will uh, full move, uh, full, uh, move forward because Ukraine don't like to be depends first of all of the gas from Russia from another okay that's why we have only one poss no, possibility to be independent in green deal it's very important for us second one uh, Ukraine is a, uh, as I said yesterday it should be moved from the uh, breadbasket of Europe of world to the supermarket of the Europe of the world. We need to, uh, together with our uh, colleagues, to start it to process more food processing process will be very important. Third, Ukraine, uh, I absolutely sure will be one of the most interesting for uh, outsourcing of the industrialist in the, our territory, where we we will see. I can I give you the only one uh, figure before the war, 25 percent of Ukrainian export to 
Germany was uh, companies, German factories, what, what were uh, located in the nearby border, who produced uh, automobile, automobile parts, etc., and moved uh, export back to the uh, Germany. And absolutely sure, after the COVID, after the, uh, we understand the logistic became very expensive, and for Europe it will be one of the most interesting destination for uh, uh, industrial. Okay. Next one, logistic. Logistic. Ukraine very much depends on. Ex uh, export, and uh, we will see a new uh, situation with export. Despite what we heard today, is from my point of view positive news about what today will be signed agreement about the deblocate uh, de de of our ports here in uh, in Istanbul. It's very good news, but very uh, in any way we will see in the couple of years new logistics. It's very important, and we uh, but logistics is a big business, and we needed to unite our efforts. And of course, maybe it. If I should to say about what's first or second, Ukraine is a country with a very high level of IT sectors, and my, from my point of view, it will be all one of the most interesting destination for uh, Ukrainian business and for international business and territory of Ukraine. And uh, besides which, Ukraine it will be very attractive after the war, like a touristic destination. Everybody would like, not only company, but a lot of people would like to visit, and we needed to prepare our restaurants and our host, uh, hotels for this. We will need all the dream not only about the finish of the war, but about the how to meet our guests. Thank you. Thank you very much. Maybe Burak, two words, three words, three sentences, maximum. <laughs> two words. <laughs> Thank you. Help us. <laughs> yes. Of course, this is a very good news. Uh, maybe not everybody knows, but it's a new news that today we decided in Istanbul, meditated by United Nations and Turkey, this Green Deal, Green Corridor, it means partially will be unblockade Ukrainian Black Sea ports and will let these 27 million tons of grains and sunflower oils and sunflower that go out where are needed. Today, one of the most important topics, which is one of the, I should say, one of the most excellent speech I have read, heard, the Anton speech, this opening, these Black Sea ports are very, very important. And today, it will be succeeded in Istanbul, as I mentioned, with the efforts of United Nations and Turkey. One sentence left. Second, Alfred. Of course, Ukraine has a big advantage. It's its resources. Ukraine is a very rich country for natural resources and human resources. We have an old Turkish story. Nasrettin Hoca. That guy likes very much Turkish dessert helva. And he went his home. He asked his wife every day what we have. To have helva you need very simple ingredients. It's butter, it's wheat, it's sugar. And as you need somebody eat it and it's Nasrettin Hoca. And every day, something is left, something less dead. And one day, he collected everything, and at the end, no halva as well. So because one people should prepare it. So I am sure that if the old conditions will be ready, with all these resources, human resources, and natural resources, Ukrainian nation will be able to do what need to do done. And Ukraine will be a bright, a prosperous, a democratic, a free, an example country in Europe and in the world. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, I have been asked to shorten the panel, and I have been asked uh, to let uh, Damien Burk what's his name, Burkhardt, uh, to have a short statement. Is he here? Yes. Will he be online? So please come to the stage. Sorry that you could not contribute from the very beginning. Take, 
take my microphone, come here while you have it. Do it from there, perhaps. So, please. Okay. Well, it's yours. Thank, thank you very much. I was originally going to join the panel, but there were too many excellent speakers and great ideas and not enough chairs. Uh, so, excuse me uh, for doing this from the lectern. Um, and I'll make it short because I have the uh, position of giving some remarks after a long, interesting panel session, but just before the lunch break. So we really we heard some very sobering views of the state of the economy, but also optimism and hope about what can be done. And for me, a huge takeout of everything that was said here is that businesses want to work, they're motivated, they want to connect with uh, their partners abroad, but it's very difficult to do so. And so what we've been trying to do at the International Chamber of Commerce is really facilitate that as much as possible, to broker those international uh, connections and connect the regional chambers of commerce with those abroad. We've also set up a centre of entrepreneurship for Ukraine, which is really focused on helping the Ukrainian refugee diaspora, especially in Europe building a B2B matchmaking platform to connect businesses in Ukraine with those abroad, and accelerating the rollout of a trade finance tool that helps Ukrainian businesses access credit in obviously very difficult circumstances. But the takeout for me is that there are so many organizations doing so much here, and the key question for us as a business community is how do we scale that? And so from my my final remark here is that what we can do at the International Chamber of Commerce with our uh, more than 10,000 chambers as part of the network in over 130 countries is we can help you scale these projects. So anyone with uh, concrete ideas for how to connect Ukraine with the world, please do uh, come to us and we can roll out good ideas uh, across our network and really just see us as, as an ally for not just Ukraine, but all of the uh, work that your organizations uh, are doing. Thank you. Oops. Thank you very much. I can't agree more. International Chamber of Commerce, ICC, is an extremely important umbrella. Before we stop this panel, I still want to ask Anna. Uh, you have a lot of experience, Anna, concerning uh, uh, sectorial uh, priorities which have to be set. Uh, what, uh, what, what are your thoughts in this respect, Anna? Are you still there? Yes or no? Yeah. I said, uh, uh, I was asked uh, uh, just some minutes ago to shorten the panel, and since uh, the ICC representative has to leave, I had to take him in, in between. I would ask you, um, with the, uh, in the remaining maximum uh, three, four, five minutes, uh, to tell us your thoughts, uh, which Ukrainian industry sectors, apart from infrastructure, which should be, should, uh, should be prioritized. Uh, if I understood well, so you, you're asking about priorities of industries, right? If, uh, if they can yes, the yes, industry, yes. Uh, you can't do everything with the same speed, with the same impetus, so you should uh, uh, build on the strength of uh, Ukraine rather than try to eliminate the weaknesses, yeah? Uh, this is a main
options. And also, when it comes to the industries which would be interesting to invest in in Ukraine, is obviously remain agriculture, uh, logistics, digital sphere. This is a by, by the way, digital sphere almost uh, did not lose anything, and they, they continue to work like they, they used to before the war started. Uh, and they will remain so as soon as uh, this, the war is going to be over, they will be just continue um, operating further. Uh, so it means that we have lots of potential in those areas, uh, which I said, uh, agriculture, logistics, and a uh, digital. Plus to that, obviously, Ukraine will, will probably need to utilize this military uh, industry and develop it. So whatever you, uh, can be offered in that area, this is a new niche which would be highly demanded. And uh, I think that the banking sector, sector, which is now currently um, doing all right, they try to maintain this macroeconomic stability in the country. They will be also very good uh, you know, supporter to all those investments, all those opportunities, uh, which, uh, which will be emerging in the business environment. Uh, so that's why it's very hard really to forecast the upcoming months because uh, the, the horizon is very, uh, I, would, I would say vague and very cloudy, so that's why we cannot understand what to expect. But nevertheless, main fundamental things they remain uh, they remain as I outlined. Thank you. Thank you very much. Clear cut statement. That was the purpose. I have uh, Emma. You want to make a short statement still? Just, I would like to add uh, to and continue what Burak has said. If you are asking about the uh, sectors to be supported in the first turn, and which will be very, very profitable, and if you are going to do business with Ukraine. So I think that this sector is local production. People can't live without heat and without food. Yeah, they can even live without the electricity, uh, believe me. And uh, I think that uh, local production of food essential needs, like family milk farm, a family business, small craft business, but uh, everything is to, is to be produced locally, because logistics uh, now is difficult, it, and uh, logistics can be broken at every moment. If community has a local production of these essentials, like uh, maybe a small um, uh, a boiler house, uh, a small uh, just uh, bakery, a small uh, family uh, milk farm, so the community will survive. So I think that local production will be next uh, boosting business in Ukraine. It's my point of view. Thank you. Thank you very much. Two sentences from you, Olha, sorry, we are in a hurry. One sentence, even better. Open it. Is it working? Oh, yes, good. Thank you so much. Uh, actually, I want to say uh, my, uh, my attitude to it. I do not like any sectorial focus. Does it mean that all other sectors should die? What do you mean we should choose the sector? What should we do with other sectors? So just let us, uh, let all our sectors to be survived, okay? okay? All our small and medium businesses to be survived. And of course, local production, this is really should be stressed. Because you, we wouldn't be, we wouldn't, don't want to be import oriented. We want to be uh, self-esteem and export oriented. This is our position, and uh, please don't kill other sectors which are not focused on in Lugano and other articles. Thank you. This was certainly not intended, but the question is sometimes you have to set priorities. Shevki, you wanted to make a statement. I just wanted to make a suggestion rather than a statement because you know, 90%, 95% of uh, business is represented here. Um, on the humanitarian front, uh, there is great 
solidarity uh, from the rest of the world with Ukraine. And you have members from both sides of the partnership of Ukraine with each of the country. Why don't you try to create, if you haven't already, a platform for business solidarity that would partner uh, one company with a company from the West to support in whichever way that support could work. They can sort it out. But create some platform for people, for companies, to be able to support individually each other. That's my suggestion. Perhaps it could work. Thank you very much. I'm sorry. I have to close this panel uh, early, 15 minutes earlier than intended. Uh, thank you for your patient patience. I do think that we had some quite interesting topics and that we came uh, quite to the point. I just would like to make a, a final statement, uh, a topic we could not work on today due to lack of time, and that is we all know that there are millions of people abroad. Okay, it's mainly women with their children. We know that there are millions of people displaced. So one of the focuses in future, in any case, should be how to secure uh, workforce and how to get back. It is a sign that you need to wrap up. And how, how to get back the people who have the brain okay. to reverse the brain drain. So, may I ask for a phone call? Nothing to speak still, so everything has been said. So we are also sending our thanks to Senator David Wells. And right now we will pros proceed with the next panel before lunch. This will be about Ido Pomoga, presentation from the Ministry of Social Policy of Ukraine. First of all, we will have a Zoom connection with Honorable Konstantin Koshalenko, Deputy Minister of Social Policy of Ukraine for Digital Development, Digital Transformation and Digitalization in Ukraine. No Zoom. Zoom or video? Okay, so we will start. Hi. Hi. Yes, so it is. Welcome, uh, and this, uh, this stage is yours, Mr. Minister. What's up, colleagues? Dear ladies and gentlemen, partners, uh, friends, and colleagues, uh, glad to see you after watching part of the forum online yesterday. Uh, between uh, us, uh, hundreds of kilometers of the Black Sea, 
Yes, we, we can hear you. My colleague Lilia will tell you more about this function after me. Thank you very much. And right now, Lilia Lishnaya. And third function, third function. So to collect application from citizens along with up-to-date bank details, cell phone numbers, and consents to the transfer of personal data, You don't hear me? Yes, yes, yes. We hear you. Um, I will tell uh, in detail. Technical uh, problems? No, no. All right. Uh, I am Lilia Lishnyansk. I am uh, advisor uh, Ministry of Social Policy. And uh, I will tell um, about uh, uh, volunteer assistant in detail. Um, we have developed two main uh, Direction on volunteer, volunteer uh, uh, assistance uh, is uh, the first uh, um, uh, assistance peer-to-peer -peer and online uh, assistance volunteer. Uh, the peer-to-peer -peer assistance uh, provides an opportunity to select an application with uh, the need of person located in some region. After estab establishing contact, the volunteers can uh, uh, as a purchase and provide directly to the person the products and basic basic um, uh, basic uh, needs uh, that the person um, such uh, of transfer these items from their own stocks. Uh, the very interesting uh, second. Um, uh, Solutions. In the case of online assistance, the volunteer uh, does not need uh, to look for the products somewhere and transfer them. The volunteer just simply makes a prepayment and the uh, recipient uh, just uh, receives a code with certificate of Idepomoga via an SMS. Uh, it is provided in a form of a gift certificate for products. Uh, the person uh, who receives the barcode uh, through SMS can buy products in any store of the partner retail chain by paying for them with uh, his code. Uh, in such a way, the volunteer provides a grocery set for a person or family. After the purchase of the products uh, by a person, the volunteer uh, receives uh, an SMS uh, what uh, this certificate has has been used and uh, a message of uh, uh, this message is uh, um, gar gar uh, guarant for the fact um, uh, his uh, donate uh, use additionally um, the volunteer receives a link to the grocery stores uh, he received he received uh, appro approval that uh, the money were, uh, were used uh, correctly. Uh, when the volunteer receives uh, such a check, he um, uh, feels that uh, he really uh, needs uh, concrete uh, uh, people sitting in Ukraine. Uh, 
the almost uh, is small we have available um, uh, demonstra uh, denomination um, about uh, six uh, seven or uh, 17 on uh, 30 dollars but uh, it could be uh, for specific uh, person or, or family to eat for several uh, days. We have introduced some um, restriction on products. Uh, uh, it's alcohol and uh, tobacco prod products uh, uh, cannot uh, be purchase, uh, purchased by certificate. Uh, all uh, other uh, products uh, are available. Uh, our platform is uh, under the process uh, of developing. Uh, more and more volunteers uh, from different countries uh, are supporting Ukrainian citizens uh, through the platform. Uh, today, uh, today there are 27 uh, countries uh, and uh, the leading countries we, uh, we, can, uh, we can see uh, in the, our infographics. Uh, the structure of citizen uh, needs uh, we uh, show in infographics and uh, uh, the today over uh, over 57 percent uh, uh, people uh, uh, needs uh, a food and uh, uh, 50 percent is uh, hygienic products uh, and 12 percent is uh, pharmacy. Uh, that is uh, uh, reason why um, our team uh, focused uh, prim primarily uh, on food products uh, because uh, you can see uh, food is uh, uh, more important uh, in our needs. Uh, um, platform, uh, other plat platform indicators we show in our um, presentation uh, and uh, I I will say that uh, over uh, 87 uh, 17 um, volunteers uh, uh, um, active uh, uh, satisfied uh, of need uh, uh, about uh, uh, 3,000 uh, our um, uh, household but uh, the, the, uh, now NAS uh, the large uh, problem because uh, people who uh, who need uh, help uh, is uh, more uh, more than people who can uh, support and assistance our people. Um, uh, our idopomoga um, uh, platform uh, was developed by Ministry of Social Policy with the support uh, of the Ministry of Digital Transformation. With the UNDP, it's a United Nations Development Program uh, with support of the Swedish uh, government in and uh, in cooperation with US Help Ukraine 22. Uh, Operation Polynesia uh, is a um, committee for open democracy and uh, active uh, particip participation of MasterCard Ukraine. Um, next, go ahead, please. Uh, next uh, slide, yes. Um, I, um, I can uh, talk about uh, our um, partner, uh, pa partnership. Uh, uh, the one of the first um, to respond was the company uh, Fozi Group. Uh, it's um, a big Ukrainian uh, food chain, uh, include uh, over um, 60, uh, 600 uh, uh, shops, um, and uh, which include um, uh, um, Silpo, Fora, and uh, other. Uh, uh, other food shops. Uh, this retail uh, chain covers almost the uh, entire country, and together we transformed uh, trans transformed uh, the process, which uh, in a peaceful uh, life um, uh, is called uh, gift certificate. Uh, we uh, through uh, um, through this uh, system, uh, 
to give volunteers from all over the world the opportunity to support Ukrainian families directly. With this aim, we develop an interface that always people from different countries to enter our platform, uh, view requests for help after reading uh, a brief description of the application, choose a specific family uh, and uh, in a specific, specific, specific uh, region, um, maybe a specific uh, city or district. Um, in the description form, people write about themselves. Uh, when you read the stories, uh, your heart uh, uh, it hurt you, your head. Um, and uh, I uh, can say about uh, our uh, big um, uh, uh, collaboration MasterCard with uh, product uh, chain. Uh, uh, so, uh, since uh, of the, uh, the first July, we started a three months promotion in the FOSI for the group retail chain with the support of MasterCard. If the benefactor pays uh, for the certificate uh, with uh, MasterCard, uh, uh, the amount of assistance increase uh, depends on the uh, amount of the certificate. And uh, I will uh, say about uh, uh, our uh, ways in super assistance uh, citizen is the first is food uh, the second is pharmacy and third is uh, gas and oil station uh, we we believe that this is this is a, a very important uh, tool because uh, when money money is collected by large funds uh, large international institutions they have uh, their own operation system they spend part of the money uh, of their existence, uh, they are a bit bureaucratic and so on. And um, uh, they, you can help uh, people directly. Uh, of course, the platform uh, does not conflict with international organization, but um, complements them. Um, uh, after all uh, international institutions, such uh, as uh, Red Cross, uh, for example, work even um, in the areas uh, of uh, hostilities and uh, temporary uh, occupied territories where, where we cannot uh, provide assistance assistant with uh, the, these tools uh, uh, in a certificate form uh, in our platform. Uh, our country is quite advanced uh, in terms of digitalization and uh, DIA is uh, used by almost uh, 20 million citizens. Even Elderly people and uh, people with low income have a simplest smartphone. Uh, this uh, this is en uh, enough uh, to live in uh, application um, and uh, then receive uh, the support. Uh, I would like um, to draw attention and uh, to the fact that Idupomoga is uh, multi-vector tools. After all, um, it does not only help a specific person um, or, or family who receives food, medicine and food. Uh, it helps the entry delivery chain uh, because um, uh, this is uh, the support of the supermarket uh, where people work. Uh, this is the support of national produ producer uh, of goods. Uh, from the point of view, the econo economy it is very it is very m m much better than just when humanitarian aid uh, uh, is delivered by distribute distributed. Uh, 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 only food or another, uh, because uh, in other humanitarian aids, uh, um, every every who works uh, in the delivery chain is also supported by by either Pomoga and uh, benefactors. Uh, integration uh, with you is not our plan. Um, and uh, is currently is in progress. Uh, it will be possible to register it through the DIA application on the Idopomoga platform. Uh, this will, uh, will 
uh, additional verification of both vol um, volunteers and aid recipients. So uh, that there is not fra fraud. Uh, there are no dozens of applications from the uh, some people. Uh, uh, e Dupomoka platform is not uh, only for our time. Uh, in in already understand that uh, for sure. After the war, Ukraine will be rebuilt a lot and uh, the need for resources will remain. People will be spending major funds of rebuilding their homes, uh, so they will need help. Uh, we hope that the international community will continue to support Ukraine even after our victory. It necessary for and for uh, to understand that uh, people in need uh, section of uh, our population population is people with disabilities, single mothers, large families, people with uh, low, low income, as, uh, etc. Uh, continue to to receive support from the state by applying uh, to social protection centers. But uh, now there are also uh, those who did not need such support before the war. These are uh, young and strong people who found uh, themselves without money uh, or work at all. And I am sincerely grateful for the international communities understanding for this problem. Uh, that all Ukrainians are currently suffering regardless and of age and start status. Uh, we hope that over time, after our victory, we, the number of people in need will decrease, but a uh, platform for aid, our project will be needed even in this time. It is new experience in charity and after all help is available in a few clicks from any country country is 100 percent uh, targeted Constantin please continue I hear very fast I hear only a uh, operator but I need uh, to uh, to uh, to you that we are open to interaction if you are interested in cooperation with this platform or its partner. If you are interested to launch a platform to help people in your country, we would be happy to share our experience. And thank you for your attention and your support. I ask organizers and participants, participants to share a video about our platform and give it to face in social networks. Put it together we will be able to strengthen Ukrainians who are fighting for independence, peace, and the entire democratic world. Try to help through the platform, and you will definitely feel your superpower. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Konstantin Koshilenko, and thank you very much, Ilya Ryshenko. Now it's time to watch the video that we're talking about. Finally, you realize that the most valuable thing in this world is life. Ukraine is fighting for people's lives, for the end of war, and for peace on Earth. Thank you very much. We'll be shortly, uh, we will be having a lunch break right now. 